Hi and welcome back to my little corner of the internet. Today we're making this bicycle jacket from about 1895 and the pattern is from Black Snail's pattern. I'm starting off with the fashion fabric or the outer layer. And there are many pieces to this jacket so I'm just taking it one step at a time, starting with the outer layer. So I have traced all the assembly marks and put on the interfacing on the back pieces. There's supposed to be some on the front pieces as well, but I'm thinking this is going to be like a wearable mock-up, so I really didn't want to put all the facing on. And I found this uh, green thread in my thread stash that I thought I was going to use, but I ended up not having, having enough, so I'm just going to use it for the hand sewing. And I'm starting off with the center back, just taking one piece at a time, making sure that all the assembly marks fit. Then I am ironing all the seam allowance, as I always do. Again, taking one piece at a time. It's a bit tricky with the back piece, but I made it work. And here I am basting together uh, where there's going to be a pleat or pleats in the on the back piece. Tracing with some chalk and then just tracing it with a running stitch. Because I'm going to press this uh, to each side so the uh, back bit is going to sit nicely from the beginning and I'm going to use this as um, help for me when I'm putting in the lining so I can make the back piece fit together or the back puff thingy sit nicely and I did this as one of the first steps because I wasn't really sure how, was, how it was going to look, or how, was, or how I was going to uh, assemble it, so I just had to do it as soon as I could, because it needed to make sense before I could move on. So I'm just pressing, making sure that they are nice and crisp. This is luckily 100% uh, cotton, so it's really easy to, uh, to make press marks in. And they hold up so I can find them afterwards, they don't disappear. They don't disappear along the way. Here you can see how it's going to look. I'm just removing my little basting stitches. You can see how the pleats are going to sit. They are much like a box pleat, but a triangle box pleat. I've never made something like this before, so I just needed to figure out how it, how it, how, how it was going to sit and how it was working before I could move on. But basically it's a box pleat, triangle box pleat. And here you can see that it's holding up the press marks really well. All done. On to the next bit. Here I'm putting in um, some cotton tape at the shoulder bit because the sleeves are fairly big and they're going to be fairly heavy. So this is going to help keep them in place. Here we have the outer bit without the sleeves done. Give you a sense of how it's going to end up looking with the collar bit and all with a nice smooth back and the little pleats. And now I'm moving on to the sleeves where I'm going to assemble all the pleats here as well. They both go in they go in different directions. There's a like a shoulder peak they both go out from. I thought this was going to be way more difficult than it actually was. It wasn't it wasn't hard at all. I'm just sewing the pleats on so I don't fuck them up along the way and sewing the sleeves together. And 
then I'm going to start with the lining pieces. You have the sleeves on. Nice and puffy. And this is um, this is the bit that's going to sit underneath. It's like a shoulder pad. But the shoulder pad you make yourself. That's going to sit um, underneath the puff of the sleeve to keep them up. The, the fabric is luckily is pretty stiff. It's it's more it's a thing. It's like a canvas cotton, so I don't have an, any problem with the with the sleeves sleeves not uh, keeping keeping the puff. But this is going to help if we have difficulties or if the fabric have difficulties keeping up the puff. These were fun to make. I just did them by hand with uh, with back stitches and teddy bear stuffing. And here I'm putting them in again with that shoulder mark at the center and then I'm just whip stitching them in. I'm really doing this jacket step by step because there are so many things that goes into making this jacket so you have to follow the instructions kinda. And here I'm just sewing together the, the lining bit and at center back there is this little fold to make the lining more movable when you put the jacket on and off. You see this in modern modern jackets as well. So I'm just pinning that, I'm going to sew that so it don't go anywhere. Then I'm just gonna keep on sew keep on sewing the lining. One piece at a time. I'm not a big fan of lining fabric. It's so not go so not wanting to cooperate and it's very simple slippery. And it's just some cheap polyester lining that I'm using that I had in my stash. And here the lining is done, put in, well not put in, but placed in, so I can see that, it's, that it works and that it makes sense, it fits. Before I'm uh, going to put in or sew together the front bit with the lining bit, I'm just going to snip the collar bit or the neck bit so it won't uh, do weird stuff when you put it on. And then I'm going to make a running stitch at center front so I can find it when it's all sewn together. Because the chalk marks is on the inside, not the outside. And then I'm starting off with putting, pinning the collar bits together because it's really important that they fit together and isn't too and that they fit and isn't wonky. After sewing it all together, I'm just snipping off the, the seam allowance at the collar bit. Again, so it won't be too bulky. And I didn't quite sew the collar right in because it looks okay in one side and not so much in the other side. I don't really know what happened there because I thought I did it the same way. So I'm just going to find the, the flaw and then press the hell out of it. <laughs> <laughs> with a damp uh, kitchen towel and a really warm, a really, a really warm iron, but it looks okay so far. It just needs a little good press. That's what I'm doing here. I'm pressing the hell out of the collar bit so it will fit and it will lay flat and look nicely. You can't do this with all kinds of fabric, but because this is 100% cotton, I thought that it wasn't going to be a problem. And here you can see the color all done. Kinda not too wonky. I think it's just me being nitpicky, and it's not. It doesn't quite look as in the picture, but it's been a long time since I've made a color like this, so it's okay. I don't mind. And now I'm just pinning together the the bottom of the jacket, folding in, and then pinning together, and then I'm going to whip stitch it with the light colored green uh, thread that you saw in the beginning of the video. I'm doing this because I don't want to uh, turn so or so and turn the, the bottom bit because there's all these pleats and stuff. So I don't want to, I, I need to have more control. And then I'm going to be pu putting on a little cuff at the sleeve bit because they are just a bit too short. So I'm just doing that to help myself. And 
here you can see I have sewn in and then I have pressed the, or made the pleats again. And sewn in the cuff bit and now I'm going to, and here you can see this, uh, I just pinned it so, uh, so when it dried it would keep the pleat a little bit better. It's almost done. I only need to put in some lovely buttons. I ended up putting on six. And here you can see me in it. Ta-da! I really love this jacket. I really, really love the sleeves and I love wearing it. Thanks so much for watching and I'll see you next time. Bye!